If you're a beginner or improving sea angler looking to start targeting larger species, you could do much worse than look to catch a ray. Virtually everywhere you find seawater meeting land in the UK and Ireland, there's likely to be a ray of some species in the area on the hunt for food. The most common of the species found in these waters are the thornback, small-eyed, spotted and blond ray. The thornback being the most widespread of the three and found all over the UK. In some areas on the south coast, underlet rays are also quite common, but their range is smaller than any of the other species. To start going about catching rays, you will need suitable equipment. A pair of good quality 4-6 to six ounce beach rods along with strong multiplier or fixed ball reels will serve you well in the majority of ray fishing situations. The reel is important as the resistance from a ray in the water is quite strong and can overwhelm reels of inferior build. To start with you should look to fish over clean ground so a main line of around 0.35mm coupled to a shock leader of 0.8mm will give you the right balance of strength and casting performance. Distance casting is strongly associated with ray angling, and there's good reason for this. On some ray venues you'll find that the longest casters catch the majority of the fish. However, this is not the case on all venues, and there are plenty of situations where you can actually overcast the fish if you're not careful. Fishing a flooding tide on a surf beach for small-eyed rays is a good example of this. Very often these fish will come into exceptionally shallow water to hunt for food, particularly under the cover of darkness. If distance casting is the only way to reach the fish from the shore in your area, then it's a good idea to go to your local casting club and ask the members to show you the ropes. Most will be only too happy to help. Don't be frightened of trimming down your baits to ensure they fly out far enough to where the fish are too. Remember, it's better to have a small bait fishing where the fish are than a large bait fishing where the fish aren't. To start with, a basic clip down pulley rig will catch fish everywhere. Make sure you keep the rig body and hook length fairly long so that the hooks and lead are a decent distance apart on the bottom. This minimises the risk of a ray settling on your lead and spooking from the grip wires if you're using a grip lead. On this note, if you're fishing an area where you can let the tide move your gear along the bottom without fear of getting snagged, using a plain lead without grip wires will help you locate more fish. Rays will often hunt in depressions in the seabed and allowing your bait to drift until it drops into one of these is a great tactic. As for baits, all four common species have their own preferences, but baits like frozen sand eels, fresh mackerel, bluey and squid will account for all of them on their day, depending on region. It's a good idea to go into your local tackle shop and ask what the top baits are for the ray species in your area and go from there. Ensure that you take the time to produce neat, aerodynamic baits that will fly well on the cast. Bait elastic is your friend when it comes to baiting up for rays. Match your hooks to the size of bait that you're using. Generally something around a 3.0 is a good start. Make sure to use a strong pattern. Most ray anglers opt for wire gape hooks made of slightly thicker gauge wire than standard. Ray bites generally have the appearance of being slower and more purposeful than the rattles of, say, a dogfish. You should always look to give them plenty of time to eat the bait. Sometimes you'll notice a couple of small pulls on the rod tip, then nothing. This is the ray settling down on your bait. Don't react to this and wait until the rod pulls over as the ray moves away or the line goes slack as the ray swims towards you. Once this happens, the fish has hooked itself. It's not a bad idea to loosen the drag slightly before lifting into the fish so that a very firm pull will peel some line off the reel. Often a ray will resist very strongly in the first few moments of the fight. Reel down until you feel the fish's weight and then smoothly lift into it. When you can, begin to pump the fish to shore, lifting with the rod and reeling in line as you drop the rod again. When it comes to landing your fish, do not attempt to drag the fish up the beach or rocks. Instead, use a wave to wash it up until it is beached, and then carefully go and retrieve it. There is an indent in the wing by the fish's eye that you can comfortably grasp. The exception to this rule is the common stingray, which requires a completely different handling process altogether. I've linked an article in the description detailing how to deal with this species. If you're fishing high up, you may need a landing net or a drop net to get your fish ashore. Once you have your ray on land, unhook it carefully. Often the ray will have taken the bait deep into its mouth and you'll need a T-bar or long nose pliers to extract the hooks. Take your time and try to cause as little damage to the fish as possible. Handle your fish carefully if you intend to take a picture with it. You can hold it by the indent in the forward part of the wing if you want, or some people hold them by the mouth, squeezing both lips together. My preference is to hold it by the indent with one hand and place the other under the ray and hold it flat. This is good for the fish as it supports the internal organs. Release your fish carefully. Sometimes they'll need a bit of gentle encouragement to swim the right way back out to sea, but with persuasion, they will go. Then, take a moment to savour your ray capture before casting back out to catch another one.